all day. Yeah, like like Joe Joe said, you know, the harvest is ready. You know, um, yeah. there's so many hearts that are open and receptive at this time, and we all know this. We can testify to that. So, man, it's just so good. It's just building faith, right? Right now, what we're doing, and so, oh, hello, Andrew. He's going to jump in. Um, so yeah, no, it's great, great, great to hear some of your amazing stories of, from the past week. It's building faith, man, and I just feel that momentum is building uh, within this group. So keep them coming. You know that day that we, the day after we had the last evangelism training last week, that I went to Wit the next day, which is our Wit is like a mini uni kind of territory school place. And I kid you not, all day long, God used me for these girls, these teenage girls, wow. like like honest divine wow. appointment encounters where it was just Holy Ghost moving through me and I just interceded and started praying for two particular girls on the spot for situations that they were going through. And it was, oh, it just, it just undid me. <laughs> Wow. Just to see how God moves <laughs> when you open a open, willing vessel to Him. <clears throat> just, yeah, just the blessing in that. Just incredible. Awesome! Wow. Thanks for sharing that, Emily. So she's just joining us uh, for the first time today. Sorry, I put my video on. Sorry. That's all good. And Hi. There we go. How are you, Emily? <coughs> Hi Emily. Okay. Hi everyone. Hedy Hedy. Yeah. Cool. So tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where you from? And uh, what's your favorite? If you were to describe yourself as a cartoon character, um, who would you describe yourself as? <laughs> oh, um. So. So my name is Emily. I'm from America. So I'm from New Hampshire originally, but I actually live in Brisbane, Australia. I've been living here for seven years and moved here to do nursing school and I work as a nurse here. And a cartoon character. Oh my goodness. I'd probably be Tweety Bird. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you know well, but I don't know. I just love birds. Um, and she's quite bright and um, yeah, maybe some like Disney princess, one of those, just because I like them nice. better. Well, it's great to have you, Emily. It's good yeah. to have you on board. Hey, Emily. <laughs> Andrew, feel free to take over, buddy. It's your time to show. Oh, how are you guys doing? Good. Hey, good. Thanks. Are you all okay? Let me just see. If is is there anyone on the on on another screen? Have I, have I got everyone here? There's nine of us, including me. That's nine. Yeah. Okay. Because typically, what I can do on these Zoom meetings, I I can speak to the people who are on 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 the screen, and then realize there's four other pages of people, and I've realized that I've not mentioned them. I've not said hello to them. I've, and then I kind of realized towards the end of the meeting that like there's another 60 people on 10 pages down. So it's good to, it's good to be with you guys. Hey, listen, you guys are having fun, right? I've just... <clears throat> yes, come on. Before I, jumped, before I jumped on a moment ago and I was kind of just backstage, you know, backstage just for a minute, and the, 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 the Zoom link, I was having problems with it. So I had to scroll back to the original one. And boy, oh boy, it took some scrolling to get back. <laughs> we, we, I fall. felt like yeah. I scrolled through Sorry. six years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome this to our world. Great, right? <laughs> Which is yeah. great. It's you know we're we're most certainly partakers in this group. <laughs> but um, I'm if, if is that sun too much for you? Is that better? <clears throat> I'm in right now. I'm in Wales. I've just been preaching for five days, uh, four days at a tent mission, um, which was great. We've seen many people get healed, and um, we've seen. Um, a number of people give their life to the Lord. I, I don't wow. know numbers. 
I don't know, but I know there was people every single night giving their lives to the Lord. Wow. I know there was people getting healed every single night. And um, one of the nights I preached on the woman with the issue of blood, and we spoke about that last week, right? And, and what Jesus says to her, you know, she went from a certain woman to an identified woman to a daughter and left healed and in peace. Well, there was, an, there was an 83-year-old woman who came to the platform after I just preached the message on a certain woman, an identified woman, a healed woman, left daughter full of peace and healed. Um, but after I preached, there was, there, was, there was a, I personally would say, um, the, the, the pioneering evangelist, the 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 pioneering evangelist in the UK. His name's Jonathan Conroth. He's like, you know, Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Well, if I can't imitate Christ, I will imitate Jonathan Conroth, if that makes sense. He is like, you know, if you're an artist, you aspire to become like other artists. If you, if you, if you make wedding cakes, you will have people in the wedding cake world who you aspire to become like, you know, I do aspire to become like Christ. But if I don't get there, I want to be like Jonathan Conroth. Um, and he is an amazing, amazing man of God. And he, he, he had this word of knowledge about people who were full of bruises. And these bruises just won't leave their body. Or if they do, another one appears somewhere else. So this old lady came forward and she rolled up her sleeves. <clears throat> she rolled up her sleeves and she was... She, her arms looked like a Dalmatian, you know, just dots, big, you know, like, like dots like this, just all over her body. And she said, they're bruises, they're not birthmarks, they, they, they disappear, but they come back. I said, well, are you banging yourself? And she said, no, they just come and they go. So I wanted this woman to be completely healed, delivered and set free. So... It says in Mark 5, I think it's verse 34, where Jesus says, my daughter. He doesn't even pray for her. He says, my daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be free from your this sickness. So she came forward and she was this, I asked her her age, she was 83 years of age, and I just felt, after preaching that message, I thought, well, hang on a minute, I want to imitate Christ, and this is a very moment that I can do that, so I didn't pray, I just said, daughter, your faith has made you well, now go in peace and be free. The next day, she came back with her son-in-law and her daughter, who were in their 50s, and they said to me, what did you do? The woman, sorry, the father, his son-in-law said, what did you do to my mother? Meaning my mother-in-law. I was like, who, who is she? I don't, I don't know who she is. She said, it's Anne. She said, you prayed for her last night. And all the bruises have gone. I said, no, I have to correct you there. That's not technically true. I said, I didn't pray for it. I said, your faith has made you well. I said, I didn't pray. I said, I didn't pray for it. I said, I, I don't want to. I, don't want to. I said, so yeah. please, like, amen. But that ain't true. Yeah. <laughs> I said, daughter, your faith has made you well he said okay. well i don't care what you said my mom no longer has bruises <laughs> <laughs> so, so Hallelujah. it was kind of it was kind of one of those nights on on friday nights and then of course some of you guys were privy to the the zoom meeting that i did with our beautiful sister jackie ford and a lady who i met just on the zoom nicola gibb and Pastor Paul and Pastor Rachel from Pakistan, where we, where we corporately, well, I say, I say when we, we corporately led 
974 people to Jesus. When I say corporately, I mean the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Amen. Jackie, me, and Nick, and Paul got to witness it. That's what I mean. Yeah. The good. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit corporately led 974 people to Jesus. And I got to be part of it. It was wonderful. So this is kind of the week I have. I've stayed over in a hotel tonight because I was last night because I wanted to speak to you guys. So here I am. I'm in Wales in a hotel room. So cool. <laughs> nice. Then finish this Zoom. I will Entry. finish this Zoom and then I have a four-hour drive home. But it's you know, a privilege on, to be you know, with you guys. Last night, Andrew, um, one of our youth was in on. I don't know if it was Friday night. Um, was in hospital. Um, they were vomiting blood, and we were rushing to dance. I had a car full of youth. And she said, will you pray for me? And I said, yes. And, and I go to the hospital entrance and I was like, I'm in a rush to go to dance. And I was like, I'll come back and pray. She came out in the wheelchair. And okay, I was like, okay, we've got to do it now. And I said, guys, do you want to jump out and pray with me? We start walking up to the wheelchair in the presence of God before we put our hands on her was so thick. And then when we put our hands on her and started to pray, I got that scripture about how you said, you know, your faith has made you well. And I prayed that and I get back in the car and one of the youth said, Ellie, she was believing before we got there. Yeah. So <laughs> and I was just going, this is mind blowing. And they youth, yeah. they, they're only <laughs> to know the Bible. They're only just getting to know Jesus. And they were, Speaking it yeah, yeah, and yeah. she healed. She wow. came to youth on the and um, oh, wow. and I like Shaq was like ministering with them and they had radical encounters and they have been amazing since. And it's yeah, just so good. That is so encouraging. That's amazing. <laughs> so <Wonderful>. cool. <laughs> Wonderful. And you know one of the things that that I noticed like. Our faith can change the way Jesus heals. And you may say, well, how? Well, there's the centurion who's serving sick, and the centurion says to Jesus, Jesus is on the way to the house. And the centurion says, no, don't come. Just say it. And Jesus goes, okay, I'll say it. But your faith can determine yeah. how you're healed. You know how your faith can determine the direction of your healing. Jesus is on the way to heal a centurion servant. Centurion goes, ah, I don't think I'm worthy to have you come, but do me a favor. Just say it. And the Lord goes, okay, I, I, I don't normally heal people just like that, but if that's what you want, yeah, well, let's do it. Be healed. And there they are. They're healed. It's crazy, right? I'm having a real blast. I, <laughs> uh, um, so good. A few, of my, a few, a few of my friends who 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 do have the liberty to say this to me, and they do say it as a joke. Well, at least I hope they do. Um, <clears throat> they say to me, <laughs> "You'll understand why I hope I hope it's a joke." They, um, <laughs> they say to me, "They say, Andrew, we 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 because of the, the simple faith that I have, and, I, and I'm looking at you guys and." I say this in all love, glory, and honor. You all look quite simple, okay? <laughs> like, I mean that in a good way, okay? In a good, in a good way, okay? <laughs> Before you start throwing stones, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I mean that in a good way. Yeah, okay? it's good. So my friend, one of my... <laughs> so, yeah. so one of my friends says to me, he said, Andrew, sometimes I look at you and it's quite confusing. He said, sometimes I think you're chemically imbalanced. And there's other times I think you're full of faith. <laughs> he says, half the time, I don't know whether you're chemically imbalanced or you're full of faith. And he says it in jest because <clears throat> um, God has, rev okay, if, <clears throat> if I had to be convinced that Jesus was healer, someone had to talk me into it even as a christian 
So I believe in Jesus, hypothetically, like, you know, as I say, another believer. Yeah, I believe in Jesus, but I'm not sure. Sorry, we lost. Did we lose you? Yeah, we look. Lost. He'll oh, end your no. screen. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that's a nice shot right there. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, come back in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yes, we're a great father in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Come back. <laughs> yes. Come back into the sidebar world. Amen. <laughs> come back. Wow. <laughs> what happened? Who wants to resurrect? <laughs> yeah. Who paid your bill? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Anyone else hey, got Alex. a tip? Anyone else got a testimony that hasn't been already posted on our, our network yes. that you want to share for 30 seconds? Go, yes. go So cool. So um, I was just at, I was just watching Esther Deegan's live, which Ali might have watched um, on her page, and it fired me up and convicted me of this. You know, some of you might know she's going through a really hard time, you know, just lost her mother and all sorts of stuff. And she's out there winning souls to Jesus at the high school today. And she's like, come on, guys, win souls. And so then straight after I watch that, I'm walking through the station and there's this homeless girl and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to go love on her. How can like, I just felt compelled. And um, she actually, at first, she wouldn't even look at me in the eyes and the Holy Spirit's like, just be gentle, just be gentle, just be there. And, and I'm like, what do I do, God? What do I say? Because she wouldn't even look at me. And she almost was pushing me away with her, like, you know, I could feel it. I was like, what do I do, Lord? And I said, what do I do? He said, just ask her what she wants to eat and tell her you'll get her anything she wants. I'm like, what would you, would you like something to eat, darling? Would you like anything to eat? She's just like, no, thank you. And she slowly looked at me and I'm like, what do I do now, Lord? And I'm just like, how are you going? Like, I was just trying to make, anyway, it's really hard. Anyway, long story short, the Holy Spirit told me to give her 20 bucks, right? Now, that's not obviously much in the grand scheme of things, but for me right now, it was a stretch, but like, because I've got some stuff I'm going, got going on financially, but it was like, not really a stretch, but it was a stretch, if, that, if I'm honest, okay? It was like, and I was like, I'm doing it. And then she actually broke down, even though it's nothing, like 20 bucks, you know, but for her, it was a lot, obviously, because she broke down and she said, no, and she's pushing it away. She said, I can't take that off you. And I said, and I just said, God told me to give it to you, sweetheart, Jesus. Uh, and I said, I said, Jesus, Jesus wants you to have $20. And she starts bawling her eyes out. And I said, Jesus loves you. He really cares about you. And before I'd given it, I think I said, Jesus loves you. I don't know. I was in the process and she was rejecting it, saying, Jesus doesn't care about me. He doesn't care about me. And, and, um, mm. and um, she was really out of it. Like, I don't know if it was tiredness or, or or drugs like she was very not really seeming to hear me but then when I started talking about Jesus she was she was rejecting me. but when I gave her the $20 she was bawling and then she was receiving what I was saying after that and something that again Esther taught me in New Zealand was love looks like something and yeah. Esther would just pull out a hundred bucks and pay for someone's groceries at the grocery store and pay for someone's petrol and I was like she demonstrated to me what love looks like and that's that love looks like something and she actually lives that out and she's a single mother and she's you know on fire for jesus so she taught me that and i learned that something that they won't hear our words but they'll see they might not hear our words but they'll hear them when we show it do you know what i mean yeah. so then from that she told me about how you know something major that happened to her and i shared actually my testimony which is going up tomorrow which you're all going to see this week probably um, from Fantail Studios, which Esther and me got filmed for our testimonies. And I shared about my like sexual abuse and how God healed me. And then she told me that her dad raped her and, and, and she said, I want your phone number. And she was just yeah. bawling. She said, I don't want to talk about it now, but I want to talk to you. I want, please give me your phone number. So I gave her my phone number and I'm going to call her tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Hey, hey, so, hey. Andrew's back, um, but hey, just waiting on that, this, there's a nugget here I want to share real quick. It'll take five seconds, and it's to do with what you just did, given that money. It's a statement. Remember this. I don't care what you know until I know that you care. Mm. I cool. don't care what you know until I know that you care. Mm. It's, it's yeah. the door, it's the, love is the doorway in. There you go. Sorry, mm. Andrew's back. That's no, awesome. no, bro. Listen, guys, I just need to... Uh, pre-apologize i'm in a hotel i'm in the middle of nowhere and if this keeps cutting out i'm sorry it's the best i can do right now i'm five okay. i'm 
400 yeah. kilometers away from home. Okay, so I'll just keep... Sarah, do you have a PayPal account? Who? Sarah. Me? Do you have a PayPal account? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. Why? Where's that? Well, the widows might just think... give you a blessing. <laughs> What's that? I, th I think as a family here, no pressure on anyone. I think if you drop your PayPal account into this group, a number of us may want to sow a seed into your life. Oh, really? And a couple of who knows, you could get that you could get that 20 bucks back a few times over. Oh. And I know you and, and I and I'm not saying that if someone else goes, I give a thousand bucks. I, I I just feel the spirit of the Lord is on that. And I think yeah. if you just drop your PayPal account into this group, a number of us may or may not want to sow into you. That's all. Okay, so yeah, let me just shot, move on. Shot Andrew, shot brother. Yeah. Bless you, man. I was thinking Bless that, bro. You, bro. Listen, we're family here. Aww. We're family. Thank you. That's so nice. So, Sarah, <laughs> if we somehow get you, if we somehow get you a hundred dollars, I want ten percent. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Come on, guys, keep piling it up. I'm Sarah's agent. <laughs> no problem blessing you, brother. I should have your details by now. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I know you didn't mean it, but I'd love to sow into you as the Lord leads me. He's an no, honor. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, let me, let me read some scripture to you. Let me read some scriptures to you, okay? And by the way, I'm blessed to see all your faces. It's great. I love you being in Wales with me. And Emily, oh. it's a privilege to have you here with Yay, us. Yay, Emily. You're the, you're the newbie. You're the newbie. Yay. <laughs> Emily's awesome. I love you. <laughs> Emily's amazing. Okay, so let me read these scriptures to you, okay? I'm going to read about five or six verses. And it's from Luke 5, okay? And we're going to go from verses 1 down to about uh, 6. Luke 5, verses 1 to 6. And because I feel a little bit of anxiety that this, this, this signal may cut out again, let me just press on, please, okay? We okay, prayed. So it's Luke, not going to cut out in Jesus' name. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Amen, yeah. Luke 5, verses 1 to 6. Okay. So it says this. One day, Jesus was standing by the lake. The people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats. They were left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Jesus got into one of the boats. It was the boat that belonged to Simon. And he asked Simon to put out a little from the shore. Then Jesus sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, to, speaking he said to Simon, Put into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and not even caught and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down my nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they begin to sink. Wow, that's so. That's a problem and a half to have, isn't it? Your catch is so big, you, you're about to sink. That's Lord, yes and amen. Okay, so I, let me just put this into some context. You know, it's like <clears throat> here is a fisherman, Simon, who knew how to fish. He had a fishing business. I mean, Matthew could tell you just how fruitful that business was because Matthew would have taxed them. Matthew was the tax man. So Matthew would have known, <laughs> Bev, yeah, yeah, amen, mate. You know them tax men. <whistles> Lord have mercy. Okay, <clears throat> so, so Simon would have knew how to catch fish, but we have Jesus. And if you can imagine Jesus walking down to the shore. So now we have the shore and we have the boat. And Jesus is looking behind him and he sees this crowd of people pushing up against him. To do what? To hear the word of God. They were intrigued by the word of God. They were pressing in to listen to what this man had to say. 
So Jesus says to Simon, hey, Simon, can I have your boat? Simon goes, right, you're going into my version now, okay? So Simon goes, <clears throat> yeah. And Jesus goes, well, push me out so I can get some distance, so I can bring them all into shot, into view, so I can, my voice can carry and they get to hear, because hearing brings faith, right? What I find interesting is, you know and I know that Jesus doesn't need this boat to walk on water. He doesn't need the boat. Now, I don't know about you, and I'm not saying I can't walk on water, but I am saying I've tried and I got wet. <laughs> okay? I always look like I fall into the water when I take my daughter to swimming, when actually I'm testing my faith and I go flat on my face, okay? <laughs> what I'm saying is, Jesus didn't need the boat. Now, if that was me, and I had a crowd of people pushing against me, and there was water, and I could walk on the water, well, I would have walked on water. Because, let me tell you now, Andrew Cannon, standing on a pulpit, preaching the gospel, is one thing. Andrew Cannon, standing on a lake, preaching the gospel, yeah. is another thing. Yes. Now, whether people believed what I was saying to be true or not, they couldn't deny that I was standing on water. But Jesus doesn't take that route. Jesus takes a route, I believe, that he's showing us an example of humility and of expansion. And you may say, well, how? Because I believe Jesus walked down to this shore knowing he was going to ask Simon for Simon's boat. Let me tell you why I believe this to be true. Well, one, I've meditated on this passage many, many times. And then I received something of which I believe is of the Spirit. And it nestled deep within me. And then I asked the Lord, if this is not of you, take it from me. And he didn't. And I've had it within my spirit now, deep within me for a number of years. So I believe that this interpretation, this revelation that I'm about to share with you, I genuinely believe it was from God because I have asked God to take it from me if it's not of him. And he hasn't. And I've preached it on a number of platforms, and yet I've never come down feeling condemned. I've always come down feeling enlightened and empowered that it is of the Spirit, okay? So, Jesus comes down and he asks Simon for his boat. I've just explained, and I'm sure we're all in agreement, Jesus didn't need the boat. What I believe Jesus is showing us here is this. He is saying to Simon, can I, if Simon was a fisherman, he is saying to Simon, can I have your place of work? Simon was a fisherman. His office was a boat. Jesus is saying, Simon, will you give me your place of work? Will you give me your nine to five? Will you give me your earlies, your lates and your night shift? Will you give me your nine to five? And hey, not only when you let me come into your office, will you push me out, not reject me, push me out so I can teach my people. Jesus yeah. is saying, Simon, yeah. can I have your platform? Yeah. Let's look at it a different way. If Simon was a... 2,000 years ago was a veterinary nurse and worked in a veterinary clinic, he would have walked into the clinic and said, Simon, give me your veterinary clinic so I can teach the owners of these animals. 
if, I, if, if, if Simon was a librarian, he would have walked in and went, Simon, give me your library so that I can reach my people. The boat is insignificant. What is significant about it? It was that it was a place of work of a disciple. That's the significance here. It's not that it was a boat. It could easily have been, I don't know, a, a restaurant. It could easily have been a wine pressing uh, barn. It could have been anywhere. Jesus is not saying that I, that I want the boat. Jesus is saying, I want your sphere of influence. Jesus didn't say to me, Andrew, I want to own Range Rover. Jesus was saying, I want the hearts of the people who work in Range Rover. Andrew, go into Range Rover. And then he, Jesus approached me and said, will you give me your platform? What was my platform? My platform was a factory with 4,500 people. And I pushed yeah. Jesus out. I didn't reject him. I conveyed him. He spoke out of me. And I had the privilege to lead some people to Christ in that factory. I had the yeah. privilege mm -hmm. to see people get healed in a factory. I want you to write this, this down, okay? It's very simple. It's just a quote. And I believe it's a, it may be my quote. I've never heard anyone say it. But I say, maybe it's of the Lord, or maybe I've heard it and not realized. However, it's this. There are miracles in the mundane. There is miracles in the mundane. You see, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but me, myself, I love gathering as the church. And it's one of my real priorities in the mission of meeting of a Sunday. And some people say, but that's not the biblical model. I don't care. I meet with the Lord every day. But I meet with the Lord with my brothers and sisters of a Sunday. And I love it. And I'm for mm -hmm. it. And I don't believe God is ever going to change my heart for it. But what I'm saying is, there's miracles in the mundane. Typically, when I worked in the factory before I received this revelation, typically, I was happier getting out of bed of a Sunday going to church than I was getting out of bed of a Monday going to a factory. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you see, because before I had this revelation, I was... I was chasing the Friday feeling but every day is the Friday feeling in Christ <laughs> every day is that mm. Friday feeling why because every day today is the day of salvation and we can see people who look like Dalmatians with bruises be completely healed we can see blind eyes completely opened what I'm trying to say to you beautiful people let me flick across now so I can see Sarah drinking a coffee because <laughs> I haven't seen your face for five minutes because I'm, I'm, I'm on the other page, okay? <laughs> Let me go back. Here we are. There we go again. It's actually now a cup, of, it's a cup of tea. Right it's a cup of tea. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I don't drink tea and I'm an Englishman. It's quite strange, right? I used but to have hey, English oh. neighbours so, and that's how they used to talk. <laughs> yeah, you'll drink a lot of tea. So here is Jesus. He's saying to Simon, hey, listen, bro. Give me that boat. I want to reach all these people. And this is what I want to say to you. Are you giving Jesus your platform or are you giving him your three hours? Are you giving Jesus your nine to five? Are you giving Jesus your six to two, your two to eight, your eight to six? So good. Are you giving Jesus every moment of your breath? Because <clears throat> we need his help. Because Simon was a fisherman who knew how to fish, but yet caught no fish. Not only did Simon know how to fish, he had the right team. He had the right equipment. He had the right knowledge and the right platform. 
and yet still caught no fish until mm. he heard the voice of the Lord and obeyed his command. Simon, cast your net on the other side. Now, I'm a fisherman in both senses, okay? I'm a fisherman in the spirit and I'm a fisherman in the flesh. <clears throat> I genuinely go fishing. I go fishing a lot. I love it. It's my place. It's my, it's my prayer room. It's my closet. I go fishing with the, with the Lord. But I also go fishing for souls. And I know how ridiculous it must have seemed for Simon to cast his net from one side of the boat to the other side of the boat. What would it have been? Seven foot from there to there? Can you imagine standing in a big supermarket or a big um, uh, shopping precinct or, you know, like a shopping centre yeah. and the Lord say to you, you're going to catch nothing there. I need you to take seven paces to your left. <laughs> Can you imagine? You'd say, Lord, I don't think I'm your sheep. Clearly, that's the voice of the stranger. Can you imagine, Emily, the Lord saying to you, Emily, in your place of work, sweetheart, this is what I want you to do. I want you to stand seven paces to your left. And you're going to catch so many people. You're going to be overwhelmed in a good way. You think, well, why can't I just do it there? Like, I can see this. I can see the spot. But you're telling me to stand there. Seven floor tiles to the left. Wow. <laughs> and I'm going to catch there. But I'm not going to catch. This is what he's saying to Simon. Mm. Stand, throw your net seven floor tiles to the left or to mm. the right. And you're going to catch. Simon must have thought, oh, my days. I'm either going to have a, a Navy B or I'm going to have to just do what he says. So he casts his net. And he pulls in so many fish. It says that the nets begin to break and the boats begin to sink. Yeah. Could you imagine being in a place of work that your nets become so full that the schemes of the enemy began to sink? Okay, and yeah. what was exposed when everything okay. else sank was that you, Emily, that you, Maradi, that you, Bevan, that you, Josie, that you, Vinny, and everyone else, okay? Everyone else, I can't go through you all right now. I'll go through the others with something else. Every one of you, <laughs> when all the schemes of the enemy stank, your place of work went, what's that you're standing on? And you say, oh, it's the rock. What's that? It's the cornerstone. It's Jesus. I'm standing here. Everything else will sink, but only what is built on him, the capstone, the cornerstone will stand. Guys, I'm telling you right now, I want you, maybe you can write this down. I want you to be brave enough to be terrible at something new. Wow. I want you guys to be brave enough to be terrible at something new. Okay? <clears throat> Take that into your working week. Be brave enough to be terrible at something new. Now, what I mean by that is, I could speak to Vinny, or I could speak to Sonia or Alison, and wherever you find your place of work, what I mean by be brave enough is, you may not have told someone in your place of work. Now, I know it's quite difficult if you work for the church. Like, I hope you have told someone about Jesus. Because uh, if not, <laughs> can I have your senior? Because if you haven't, Sonny, can I have your senior leader's name, please? I need to, I need to make, a, uh, make a report. <laughs> 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 I, need, I need to make a report. And the report called the crowbar. Okay, so... <laughs> we need to be brave enough to be terrible at something new. Tell people about him Amen. and be terrible at it. Be terrible at it. I'll that. tell you this. I'll tell you this. I 
and I'm going to use Bevan because his, his shirt just keeps catching my eye, so I'll use Bevan. Okay. <clears throat> Me and Bevan, we have never led anyone to Christ. I think I can speak for myself, bro, and I'm, I'm pretty sure about you too. We have never led anyone to Christ without telling them about Christ or praying for them. I've never done it. I've mm. never led anyone to Christ without telling them about Christ. Right. I've never mm. done it. Yeah. I've never good. done it. Yeah. I've never done it. You see, the body is the slave of the mind. The only reason why all of us are on here right now is because our mind has positioned this earthly vessel in front of our device. If this mind tells us not to do it, you won't do it. The body is positioned from the instruction of the mind. Okay? How can they bring themselves as a sacrifice unto God and ask for forgiveness if their mind has never heard of him? If their mind cannot bring this body into submission to offer it to Christ, how will they ever do it? They have to know it has to come from here to here. Faith comes by hearing. It's in here. And then it's in here. If you believe in your heart, well, how do you hear it? How do you hear the things that you believe? Through the ears, through the mind, into the heart. The body is the slave of the mind. We have to get Christ to their mind. So their mind can get their heart to posture their body and life in front of him. And this is what we have to do. This is why Paul, this is why the, the Bible tells us to keep renewing our mind. Metanoia, repentance, the renewing of the mind. Why does the mind keep renewing? Because There'll be a time in your life where you'll get used to walking 15 yards on water. But unless you renew your mind, you'll never walk 20 yards. The mind needs to keep being renewed. The mind is what puts this, the mind, body, spirit is what puts this below the spirit of God, so God can usher it in. So, let me see where we're up to. Okay, so, so Jesus is asking for our platform. And I want us this week to go ahead and hear those words. Vinny, he wants your platform, brother. Melissa, he wants your platform. Josie, he wants your platform. So Lucy, he wants your platform, brother. Alison, the giggler, smiler. <laughs> there, she, there she goes. You've only got to say she smiles and boom, she's gone. <laughs> Come off mute. <laughs> Listen, guys, I'm, I'm t <laughs> listen, can I just be vulnerable with you? And I say, I say you'll probably hear me say this a lot, okay? <clears throat> so, I want you guys to honour what I say, because I honour and respect what you say. So I don't want to fall into a false sense of security and say, oh, you know, I'm no good, and you know, I'm da, 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 da. but what I'm saying to you is this, what I'm saying to you is I have to implement into my own life. I haven't got this nailed down, and then I'm saying to you, get it done. Like, I'm going to go out here, and I'm going to check out of my hotel with my keys over there, and I'm going to be terrible at rounding all the stuff up before I leave, because it's all going to look awkward and it's all social distancing and I'm going to preach the gospel to them and it's going to look awkward and I'll probably look sweaty and I've 
yeah, my, I've got shorts on, my legs don't look the best, and they're probably going to giggle at them, and, you know, <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> just, you know, see, like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just going to get messy. It's going to get messy, but you know what? I'm going to give Jesus my platform today. It's Monday. What a good day to start the week. I'm just going to do it, and I'm going to look silly, because we do. Let's face it, we always look silly when we preach the gospel open air. Like, we just yeah. do, because the world, it's, it's, it may look silly, but it doesn't sound silly. Do you know what I mean? Because the minute we stand out, everyone mm. wants to just go like this. So when I finish, I'm going to check out, and I'm going to be brave enough to be terrible at something. So good. And I'm just going to tell them about Jesus. Come and on. I think that's what we do. And <clears throat> if we... Robbie Dawkins, I don't know if you guys have heard of him. He's a dear friend of mine. He, he, I sat under one of his teachings once, and, and, and he, he was teaching us to rejoice in rejection. And if we can rejoice in rejection, we've, we've smashed the enemy good and proper. Because what he wants to do is he wants to instill fear and the anxiety of rejection. But if we can beat that, if we can step into that, knowing we're going to be fine if they reject us, we've smashed it. So let me give you an example. I did a, an equipment weekend in, in, in a place not far from where I live. It was 40 miles away. And we sent them all out. And I said, listen, we're going out to win souls, but we're going out to sow seeds and we're going out to preach the gospel, okay? So if someone rejects you, rejoice in the rejection. because if you don't share your faith, no one will reject you. And if you reject the Lord, he may reject you scripturally. If you deny me before people, I'll deny you. That's what the Bible says. So we teach people to go out and rejoice in rejection so we they all went out for two, an hour and a half they came back and we had as typical typically what happens we have everyone wants to share a testimony it's wonderful right so you've got to allow amount of time per person because you get the the likes of me who wants to share one and it takes 20 minutes and stuff so you we have we have this and this this woman came up and the six or seven people before here you know one had led one to Christ, one had led six to Christ, one had seen a healing, one had a prophetic word, another one had a prophetic word, another one didn't lead anyone to Christ, didn't speak to anyone, just observed. And, and then it got to this woman and she said, she said, oh, I'm so, so happy. And I'm like, glory to God. She's won 50 people. Like, my, I'm like, she's bouncing. <laughs> she said, I didn't lead anyone to Jesus. She said, oh, she was an old dear, old English, beautiful lady. She said, oh dear. She said, I was rejected six times. It was beautiful. <laughs> well, <Wow. laughs> Believe me, yeah. that disarms the enemy right there. I was rejected six times and it was beautiful. Guess what? She is no longer afraid whatsoever in being rejected actually she can rejoice she can grieve for them but rejoice unto the lord that she's doing his will yeah. do you know what i mean like no yeah. one's happy that someone says no don't hear me wrong but you can be happy when you step out in obedience whether they accept or reject mm. so what i'm trying to say to you the long way round for 45 minutes is Give Jesus your platform, man. Come on. I want to hear. Um, I sometimes get a little bit overwhelmed when I speak to people, you know. Um, I love you, bro. I sometimes, I sometimes just get overwhelmed that, like, as I sit here and I say to people, family from different nations and and i say and i'm and i'm provoking you guys to go and tell people about jesus and i'm so happy that i know him and i get to sit here with people who like 
who loved Jesus. And it was only like 10 years ago I was dying, cocaine addict, alcoholic. And I get to sit here and like, I get to encourage people to so go good. and tell people about Jesus. So and good. it's like, Hallelujah. it's like darkness <laughs> and light. It's like darkness <laughs> into light. It's like, it blows my mind that I actually know Jesus. Wow. That I actually know him. And I get to speak to people who know him. And I get to speak to people about him. It just blows my mind that you guys would sit and just listen to this lad from Liverpool just try and make sense of all of this. And you're, just like you're awesome, we love like, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so overwhelming that I get to be able to do this. And I appreciate you all, but listen, guys, let's be terrible at this. Don't go looking to be terrible, but let's get out there and tell people about Jesus, you know. Mm. Like, listen, don't make your goal terrible, okay? I'm not saying that, okay? <laughs> don't set your standard as terrible. Let's push through that. But I'm saying, don't be afraid to be rubbish at, yeah. at sharing your faith. Yeah. I tell you what is rubbish. I tell you what is rubbish. Knowing the truth and not sharing it. Now that is poison. That is delusion. That is that is anarchy of the very spirit and soul that you have. To not tell people the truth and you know it. Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. Now again. No condemnation. This is provocation. I want to provoke you. We are all working this out together, okay? Yeah. None is the higher. No one is the highest on here. No one is the lowest. You know what? God is a respecter of no people, meaning he's a respecter of no persons, meaning he doesn't love Sunia any more than he loves Melissa. He doesn't love Josie any more than he loves Emily. He doesn't love Emily more than Lucy. Also, he hates uneven scales. He calls them an abomination. So therefore, he looks at all of his kids all the same. He doesn't favor any of us, even though I think I win the best share competition today. <laughs> it's a good think, share. Yeah, I love it. I, I, think, I, think if, I think if the Lord was leaving the 99 for the one, I think he'd most certainly come after me with this share. Look at it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but you understand, guys, what I'm trying to say is this. Let's just keep moving that way. Let's keep. We see through a clouded glass. We only see heaven in part. And the part that I see, I'm determined to get there. I often ask the lost, how's life? Where are you going? And they say, ah, I don't know, but... I'm sure I'll get there. And I'm like, I'm sure you will too. Let me tell you the truth. You will get there. But your there can change right now. There so is two good. places there is. And you're going to one of them. Guys, listen. We need to become decision people. We need Smith Wigglesworth. I believe it was Smith Wigglesworth who said this. Lord Make me a decision man. Make me a man that, that I move in such integrity and imitating Christ that he all, all that who come across me are left with no choice but to make a decision to accept or reject. Wow. Do you, do you guys have them in, like, in some sort of like mountain ranges? where you have the finger posts and it will say like New York, 6,000 kilometers that way. It will say like Saudi yeah. Arabia. Hey, do, you, do you guys have them? Well, well, we have them in the UK. You know, we say like Australia, 15,000 kilometers that way, New York. And we have them on some small hilly mountain ranges. And that's how we should be. We should always have a finger post of Christ this way. He's yeah. here. And I think, I think we need to um, 
to reduce the unfruitful ability of living in our lives. We need to eradicate complacency. The word complacency is one of smug character. One who is, one who believes, bye bye Alison, the one who believes they have enough and is not contending for more, that is complacency. One of smug character, one who believes they have enough and one who is not pressing in for more. Don't ever become complacent. Complacency is one of the biggest feet, is one of the biggest causes of theft on your, on your destiny. To say I have enough is to say I don't want no more. And to say I don't want no more will stop you from thirsting and hungering, hungering for righteousness. Yeah. The actual real, the, 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 the real interpretation of that scripture, if you go right the way back, you know, we know it is blessed are those who thirst and hunger for righteousness. Well, actually, the original text of that, and I can say this quite boldly because it was a dear friend of mine who taught me this. He's a theologian of very high stature. He said the actual original context of that was not blessed are those who thirst and hunger for righteousness, but was this, blessed are those who thirst and hunger for justice. Now, yeah. let me tell you the difference. Righteousness is, I'm done. Justice is, I need to fight for them as well. That's good. That's good. Does that make sense? Yeah. What did you mean by I'm done? Sorry. Righteous. I'm okay. Okay. For me. So yeah. bless and thirst to those who hunger for righteousness. So righteousness is thank you, Lord, for what you have done for me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Blessed are those who thirst and hunger for justice. Is this? Thank you, Lord, what you have done for me. Now I need to go and do this for the least of those. I need to fight injustice for because of what you have done for me. So good. Yeah, so good. So good. Bevan, isn't that beautiful, mate? So good. Hey, mm. can I just, uh, it's funny you say that, you know, you know, William Booth, have you heard of William Booth? He was, yeah. he was the founder of the <clears throat> Salvation Army. And, I, and, and as it's right on what you're saying, and you did say my name, so I'm just going to chop in here and if I can say this, is... I, I, I came across this thing, Google it. I actually shared this a couple of years ago when I was preaching and it was on William Booth and he got delayed to go to some big meeting and he could only send a telegram, <coughs> but the telegram could only take a certain number of characters. So when the tel telegram turned up at this big meeting, he couldn't get to, it had one word, others. It's, that's the only wow. word that came, others was the only word that came through for the meeting, others. And it was from William yeah. Booth. Wow. And that's exactly what you're saying right now. And it's the Holy Spirit. I think they just said my name there so I could share that with you. Um, it's exactly what you're saying. Bro, just that is, bro. that is so cool. I, yeah, I'm no, no, it just, just broke me. I shared it in this I'm meeting. Just it just, it right now. William Booth, you Google that Seven? and find it. Yeah. Do me a favor, yeah. brother. Just privately message me that or put it in the group. Just, just that yeah. little thing. Yeah. That would be amazing. Um, so guys, listen, I feel as though from what I wanted to say, I feel as though I'm done for this for now, but I most certainly would like to spend the next 15, 20 minutes answering questions or asking questions. And like, if Emily, if you have a question for Miranda, Miranda just, just ask, like, you know, if they don't all have to yeah. come this way and back, like we're a family here, you know? Yeah. So, so Sunia, can I just hand it back to you? In, in, a, in, a, in an official capacity kind of thing. And then you just run with it. <clears throat> yeah, let's go for it. So far through the questions, um, and let's just make sure everyone has a, has a turn and, and putting their questions through. So uh, who'd like to go first? Me, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll just mute you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do have a burning question about healing. Can I ask you, Andrew or anyone? Just, like what, like I'm, I'm, 
Oh, yeah, asking everyone. Uh, like, I'm, I, I'll be honest, if I'm really raw, I'm a bit, I get a bit frustrated even lately. It's just, it keeps coming up. Like, I get frustrated, like, in a way, because I, like, I've prayed for people, you know, with, like, I feel like, like, Pastor Phil Pringle, um, you would know this, Josie, he, he used to say, because I was part of C3, he used to say, like, you practice on the small things, like, so, like, as in, if you pray for headaches, and then you build faith muscle, so, like, I've prayed for people with headaches, like, in, back in the day when I was starting, when I was doing C3 College, Josie, I would pray for people like my boss at work and she had a bad shoulder. And one day she kept saying no. And then one night I was like, look, you're in a lot of pain. It's up to you. I know you always say no, but would you like me to pray for you? And I prayed for her and her pain left her shoulders and she was like freaking out, hugging me, thanking me. So I've started back then like that. And then now it's like, I, I know people with cancer and I want to see people healed of cancer. And then I see like, um, you know, one of the guys from Shah's team out there in Western Australia and he's out there this week. He was pulling someone out of a wheelchair yesterday and he's praying for people. And I'm not saying I'm frustrated with him. I'm so excited. But I, I guess I see him. He's healing people of cancer. Like he's praying for someone on the street. Every day he's like, he's, he got someone healed of cancer two days ago. And then he pulled someone out of a wheelchair yesterday. And I'm like, why when I pray for people for bigger things, they're not getting healed? Like, is it something in me? Like one of my elders, um, Robbie, he runs our School of Supernatural from Bethel. And he said that there are hindrances to healing that, and you know, there are hindrances like things like unbelief, unforgiveness and stuff like that. And he sent me a full list and stuff like that. So like he said, there can be hindrances to, and I guess it can be to do with like, can it be to do with us, Andrew or anyone? Or is it like as, as well, like the other person as well? You know what I mean? Like, for example, I've got my auntie, I've been praying for, for healing of cancer. She got healed 10 years ago. I'm living with her now. She's not here right now. But, um, you know, and I really want to see her healed of cancer. And, and then I, I'll be honest, I do blame myself, I think, or maybe it's something in me, like condemnation or something in me, like that's stopping it, you know, and I don't want to spiral down that road if that's not biblical, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> I just... Well, I, I, I would say this and then please, I'll, I'll spend a minute putting some mm. context into what you said and then someone else, would, if they would like to jump in. And, like, I and, didn't mean to open a can of worms, by the way. Yeah. No, 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 it's great. And this is what this is what this time is exactly for. What I would yeah. say is this is the Lord is patient, long suffering, desiring none should perish. It is the will of the Father to heal. Yeah. A lot of the times we're looking introspectively at the situation. Okay. Yeah. Why not? What am I doing wrong? This, this, this. Now. I genuinely do believe that lack of faith. Listen, if you if if you're if you if we're praying for people to get healed and we don't believe they're going to get healed, I, I feel just fundamentally there's a problem. Let alone spiritually, just fundamentally, yeah. it's it's almost like it's almost like hypocritical, schizophrenic. It's like it's. It's, yeah. it's like they're, it's like clapping hands and saying you've only got one hand. It's like it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So what I would say is this. I believe we can get it horribly wrong and the Lord can still get it right. And I'm going to give you a testimony in 30 seconds. Me and my wife, were in, we were in a church six years ago. The pastor brought a load of people forward and we were praying for people. He was this beautiful, beautiful, really native African woman who no one knew, came to the front. We had a church of 300 people. Through this beautiful African accent, she said, brain tumors, one week to live. So me and my wife, we laid hands on her head and we prayed and we cast those tumors out. So we were expecting her to come to work church the next week and she didn't come. But she did come the week later and her whole countenance had changed. Okay? So we and my wife, we ran up to the lady and we said, hey, what? She's, she's jumping. She said, they've all gone. All the tumors have gone away like glory to God. I said, we said to her, so where were they in your head? And she looked very confused. I thought she didn't understand us. When actually we didn't understand her, she didn't have any brain tumors at all. It was her sister. Her sister was dying in hospital and we laid hands on her 
Cast the oh. tumors out and his sister got out of bed healed. Wow. So that is us getting it horribly wrong and beautifully right. All in the same gesture. The heart and the belief was right. The circumstances were completely wrong. It was not only was the circumstances wrong, it was the wrong woman. <laughs> She wasn't even the person that needed healing. We laid hands on it, and boom, a sister walked. That, with that, within that week, a sister was completely healed. So, just keep pressing in, just keep believing. Yeah. Just keep pressing it's, in it's and keep believing. It's un unbelief, isn't it? Like, I need to pray. I feel like I need to pray, take my, un like, you know, like, my unbelief. Because I'll be honest, sometimes I, I pray, and in my head, like, I probably don't believe they're actually going to get healed. And, that, and I don't want that anymore, you know? yeah. Okay. So is that just unbelief? You just got to repent of it and yeah. I, do, do you know, Sarah, I just want to say this again, and this will speak to everyone. Words that you're using are bringing demise to your very stature and character. You said, I guess it's just unbelief. Well, I'll say you just need to believe more. Same thing, two different ways. You're, you're speaking over yourself. I don't believe. It's your unbelief. I say you do believe. Maybe you need to just believe a bit more. You're a believer. You're not an unbeliever. No. <laughs> you're a That's believer awesome. of the most high God. You yeah. believe in him. You couldn't be told. You could not be convinced Jesus is not real. You know he's real. <laughs> That's right. To yeah. take yourself out this equation and just say, God, I need you to move. So good. And let's see what happens. You're a believer. You're not an unbeliever, sister. You're yeah. a believer. Amen. You believe that God can do this. I know you do. I've seen you. I've seen you in operation. I've seen you move. I've seen you lay hands on anything with a pulse. I've seen you do it. <laughs> I've mm. seen the encouragement that you bring. I've seen those prophetic words that you bring. I've seen the joy that you bring into a room. I've seen the encouragements. I've seen the compassion that you're moving. Mm. You could never convince me you don't believe. <laughs> don't convince yourself. Yeah. You are a believer. Sarah, you yeah. are a believer. Just keep believing. Yeah. And God's going to move, okay? So good. Amen. I like how you say, get yourself out of the equation. I'm going to try that. Like, it's just, just Jesus, do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Come on, Amen. bring them through. You bring guys are amazing. Any other questions? Hey, Melissa. I feel like Melissa's got a question. <laughs> I actually do, but I was like, I don't know how to say it. So um... I knew you had a question. <laughs> So I, I go out a lot with my children and, and we like talk to the homeless and then we pray for them. But I, I feel like how, how do I, um, like, is it necessary to bring them to salvation or like, how do you say it out? Right. <laughs> this is just sort of like, we are just stepping out of faith more so by myself and my children when we go out. Beautiful. And then after I leave them, I'm like, oh, damn, I wish I had have asked Jesus, you know? I wish I had a yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I would say this. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep going yeah. to visit the homeless. Jesus said, whatever you've done on to the least of these, you've done to me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. You quenched my thirst. Keep doing that. Yeah. Now, you, you can feed and, and water someone straight to the gates of hell. You can, give them a, you can give them a hand sandwich when they've got one foot in hell and one foot in the earth and they're just passing through. Yeah. We have to attach something that is of eternal to the very motion that you're doing. Mm. Yeah. Now, because you can feed them, like, like in Acts 3, Peter doesn't give them silver and gold. He didn't give them a hand out. He gave them a hand up. Mm. So what I'm saying is, when you're in these situations, just say, hey, listen, share your testimony. Melissa, he's your Jesus too. And he's all mine too. 
and he's all Salusi's too, and he's all Josie's too, but he's all yours too. Share with them who he is to you. So listen to this. In John 1, 14, it says, the word became flesh and moved and dwelt amongst us. That's in the NIV. In the message translation, it says, the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. Okay? So, if the word can become the flesh, our flesh can become the word when we imitate them. Tell them who Jesus is to you. And I promise you, you will recite and you will preach more scripture than you ever have in your life when you tell them who Jesus is to you. Because you may not know, you may not know two verses of where it calls Jesus healer. You may not know two verses off the top of your head where Jesus is the redeemer. You may not know five scriptures of where in him we can only be saved. You may not know that. You may not be able to be one of these ministers who preach, bang, 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 just line after line after line, and and it all just opens up at this bouquet of beauty. But I guarantee you, you know who Jesus is, and I guarantee you, you know what he's done for you. And I guarantee you, when you start telling them, listen, oh, I met with him. He's here. He's Emmanuel, God with us. He restored me. He was nailed to the cross for our iniquities. You're already preaching the cross. He healed me. He was, he, we were healed by his stripes. And you're already preaching the ABs. And this is what he done for me. Oh, man alive. He filled me with peace. He is the prince of peace. He's clothed me in truth. Is the truth, the belt of truth. I'll, I'll post in what out of my preaching notes. I'll post in the armor of God and who he is. And you can go through it. Because it says the, awesome. the breastplates of righteousness, Jesus attained our righteousness. The belts of truth, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The sword of the spirit, Jesus became, which is the word of God. The word became flesh. Jesus is the armor of God. So when you leave, they'll be dressed in him. I'll send it into your notes, okay? It's good. Um, Thank you. Thank so God. just tell them, Melissa, who he is to you. And then here comes the double-edged sword. Hey, say it like this. Hey, so do you know this, Jesus? You want to give your life to him and say it like this. I mean, hey, you'd be crazy not to, right? Yeah. 99% <laughs> of the time they'll go, yeah, Melissa, What this man has done for you, I need to pan right now. And that's how you do it. That's typically how I lead most people to Christ, by telling them what Jesus has done for me. Because I always get that right. Yeah, so good. Does that mean, I hope that helps. I hope that that helps. helps. Thank you. I feel like doing that now. (laughs) Can I just add something to it? Of course you can. Um, so I, I, I do this every Friday night. We, we take a trailer of hot food out to the rough places in uh, the street. So every Friday night we're down there, rain, hail, shine. But sometimes we've got 100 people standing there waiting to get their food. And um, there's not a huge amount of time to do the best, you know, all of that. Um, but of course it is about being convinced of who we are. Uh, who yeah. Jesus is to us, right? But very quickly, it might be that I have a whole meal in my hand and I'm like, oh, he broke his meal for you. And it's as simple as, you know, um, is there anything right now that I can quickly pray for you? We don't have to close our eyes. We don't have to, you know, it's just as we're talking now, you know, what can I pray for you? And they always are like, oh, I can do with some legs or I can do, you know, whatever, there's something. And then I just segue into a whole, you know, okay, we're going to pray for that breakthrough. We're going to pray for this miracle and that thing. But you know what? There's one real simple prayer I want you to pray for. And it's as simple as just inviting Jesus into your heart. Oh, good. Right? <laughs> and straight away, they're like, yeah, okay, let's do it. And it's, very, it's literally like, forget my how thou art thou, Baba. You know, <laughs> none of that, right? It's just, you know, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive my sins. Help me follow you. Amen. 
so good. Like we're doing it like this with eyes open, talking. It's not, you know, religious. You know, let's be real. And yeah. and we're like, that's how we I love it. Very, very quickly because we don't have a lot of time sometimes. But while Absolutely. you're feeding them food, you're feeding them Jesus in two minutes. I love that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Cool. The food is a practical act because, you know, we, we, our, this team here, we know prayer is powerful, right? But honestly, they, they don't. Like, they're hungry. They're cold. They need a beating. They need blankets. Like, we're giving them a beating. We're giving them a blanket. That is the hands and feet. That's that will, you know, will cut the heart instead of us just saying, oh, we'll pray for you, good luck next week, you know, I hope you get a blanket. No, it's not that. So, anyway. Awesome. awesome. Cool. Emily, awesome. did you have a question? Yeah. Um, and it kind of taps on to what Josie was saying. I think that's, I'm so encouraged by your ministry, Josie. That's, that sounds incredible. Um, yeah, I was actually thinking, um, is the sinner's prayer like necessary to do when you're evangelizing? And I have struggled, I think, when I've gone out and I'm chatting, but I don't know how to like ask them to invite, you know, do the sinner's prayer. And very rarely do I do that. And sometimes I'm like, well, maybe it's not necessary if they, you know, believe in their heart and whatever I've, you know, shared with them, they believe already, okay, Jesus must be real. Like, um, but I always find that a bit awkward, um, just being like, the sin is prayer. Um, well, yeah. I, 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 I'm, from what I've read, I'm led to believe that the sinner's prayer is about 120 years old. Okay. Mm. Okay. So everyone that came to Christ before the 1800s never said it. Okay, you may go, this is heresy. We've, man has put that in place for man to understand this is the hinge. It's from darkness to light, and this was the day you did it. Okay? Mm. So, it's quite strange because I do ask people to say it, and I, and I, all, I, I get it. For me, the sinner's prayer is for them to, okay, if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, okay, and that God raised him from the dead, okay, so therefore, there is that command, there is some prayer, there is something from the heart out of the mouth, the Bible instructs that, if not commands it, if you believe in your heart and then confess Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead. So it does command audible something. So what I do is I always remember that. And when I'm asking people, I go, so, do, so would you believe that Jesus is? And they say, yeah. I say, well, why don't we say it together? Because the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And I want you to be saved. So let's do that. Yeah. And then I just keep my prayer of, we're using that title because that's what we're using. My prayer of salvation, it's different every time. However, it is always, Lord, forgive me. I repent. I believe. Save me. Do you know what I mean? And Emily, I think me and you are going through sometimes the same battle with it. And, and, and as a evangelist i rack my head sometimes yeah I, i'm i'm brave yeah. enough to be terrible at it yeah because the script is it sorry sorry emily no go because is this right andrew i always wonder this it's just it's as if you confess with your mouth that jesus is lord and that he was raised for oh gosh it's how embarrassing i can't even quote it but that scripture that he was raised from the dead, then you will be saved. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. So if you believe in your heart, that's with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and God's raised him from the dead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll post, I don't want to take time because I know I've already talked, I'll share it in the group, but I've got two testimonies where family members didn't say it. I've got three actually. 
people on their deathbed. They didn't say it, but I know they got saved. And obviously we would all agree that of course, Jesus sees that, you know, uh, where, you know, one was in a coma, two were in a coma and one was um, having a heart attack. And so they didn't say it that I know of out loud, but I know they said it in their heart because I've had dreams and visions and confirmation of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, of course, Jesus sees the heart. And, and then I've had people that go on, you know, you've all seen people go on the altar, say the prayer, but then completely turn the, like, not even, you wonder if they actually meant it because the way they, yeah. they live the next day and they're not in, they're not following Jesus now. So I guess it's about the heart. Is it Andrew? It's about the heart. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I would say this, even though God is the creator of heaven and earth, he holds the pleiades in his hands and he created every one of us. He's far less complex than me and you. That's right. What I mean by that is we keep trying to rationalize God and God's just going, I'm here. Like, I'm here. Like, he's far less complex than, his thinking is far less complex than our thinking. I just know it. He's, he doesn't change. We do. <laughs> that suggests one thing. He never changes. We do. We are far more complex beings than God. And I'm telling you right now, if someone could not say, and they are in a place of, in the valley of decision, and their heart within them is screaming out, save me, God. He's a merciful God. He's a merciful God. That's right. Amen. I don't know. I don't know whether these people get to heaven or not, but what I know is that my God is merciful and mercy yeah. triumphs over judgment. Amen. And I know if there was a man or a woman in a coma who had a sudden incident, I personally believe that his mercy yeah. would triumph over judgment. If in their heart, Bevan, they are screaming out, Lord, Lord, save me. I, I don't know theologically. I can't piece it all together. But I would like to believe, and I believe the God that I know would pull them out of torment. That's Amen. Wait till totally you hear these agree. testimonies. I'm going to post them. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll put that in a post before, actually. I think probably halfway down my page, I'll put a salvation prayer in there. And I was thinking about people like mutes, people that are born without tongues that can't speak. Like God's got to make a way for salvation for them. And so I put, I, I put in there, I believe it was the Holy Spirit that led me to put it in there. I said, look, if you can't speak, thinking of people that are maybe in slavery and think that, that can't speak, cry out from in your heart. Like I've done, I've, I've prayed out things before in desperation, um, you know, out of my heart, you know, you just, the words well up in here and you, it's like you hear yourself talking in here and I'm so sure that, um, you know, God's just, a, a, you know, the, God is love and he, he's going to make a way for anyone to get to heaven, even those that don't have tongues, you know, but if you've got a tongue, use it. <laughs> that's, 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 what I, that's what I believe. <laughs> Amen. Well, listen, it's been beautiful catching up with you guys again. Let's just keep dropping things in. Um, um, and also, let's drop in some testimonies, words of encouragement, some scripture that, that, that ties into what we're saying, um, mm. even if it ties into what we have said and not what I have said. Like, we're in this together. We're all not in a net. And God is just tying us together. So if it's something like what Emily asked about the prayer of salvation, or if it's something about Josie asked about, you know, that two-minute get in the gospel, like, let's just tie one another up in love and just let's work this out together, okay? Mm. So good. Mom. Fantastic. Can we post questions in the chat? Is that or if we didn't get to... It, post it's questions. our chat. It's our yeah. chat. We can Amen. Yeah, do what... Yeah. Cool. Now, you may have to... If, if, it, if it's directly to me, there's a great chance you'll be sending it to me when I'm in bed. So please give me five or six yeah, hours to respond. Of course. Are you, a, are you a builder, Andrew? I used to be. Me, too. I'm, I'm a builder by trade, too. I, I've, I've got a 30-second thing that you'll understand. I only read it today on someone else's page. And it was about, you know how water, water will always find its lowest path? Yeah. yeah. And, and in this comment, it was something like this. I'm only re-quoting what I read quickly, and it's like, 
water will always find the lowest path. So um, if you want to get filled by God, you've got to get down low. Yeah, yeah. Come on, mate. Yeah. Come on. That's beautiful, <laughs> mate. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Lovely, mate. Lovely. Well, Love God you, bless you guys. Bless you. Thank you, Andrew, for that. And I uh, just want to add just really quickly, hey, your activation for this coming week is to be ready to share next week. And I'm going to just kind of open up the meeting room just a little bit early so we can get in and uh, catch up with everyone there. Next week, your moment of being terrible or at doing something new. So be ready to share that uh, next week. But um, hey, hope you guys have an awesome week. And can we just get, uh, Melissa, why don't you just close us off in prayer? Oh, <laughs> thank you, Lord. <laughs> Shots, sis. <laughs> Father God, for such a great night tonight, and just for Andrew, Lord, for sharing his heart and these great pearls of wisdom, Father, I pray that you apply them to our life, God, as we go out every day. Lord, may we be a witness for you, Jesus. May we be you, Jesus, and may we speak only things from heaven, Father. I pray that you'd anoint our lips, God, and give us great divine appointments this week, Lord, as we go about our workplace, where we go about our family and friends and our neighborhoods, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for such a great and timely word, Father. Um, bless each and every one on the Zoom tonight, Lord, and our families. Um, keep us safe in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Bless you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.